to Miss Smiley's for a bread making course. I hope you and Grandpa have a lovely quiet time, Josh. Ah, I spoke too soon. Sandy Bay. <laughs> it was Great Aunt Loretta, Grandpa's sister. I'll pick some flowers for Grandpa. Just then we heard. It was Mr. Whips. Sounds like Mr. Whips' car. Hello, everyone. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that car is a pest, Josh. I'm mm. always nearly tripping over it myself. <laughs> well. I just popped by to ask if Josh fancies helping me with something. I have a little plan. Oh, Ooh. I do like a plan, me. Bob the boat is due back from holiday today, and I thought it would be nice to clean his boat and make it look shipshape for his return. Oh. Wanna help? He left me the key, see? Oh, I'd love to go. Can I go, Auntie Jules? Well, I don't see why not. Yes, today Mr Whoops and I were going to do a cleaning job for our friend Bob. I'll just get me things. Or we can go together with you in Greenie Jewels. Brilliant! I'll see you there. What? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, you're up, Grandpa. Josh is coming with me and Mr Wolves to clean Bob's boat. Can I come? Don't be silly, Grandpa. You can't oh, clean oh, anything. Oh. I picked these lovely flowers for Bob. Smells. Hey, you. I thought the flowers were for Grandpa. Change of plan. <laughs> Back in a bit. And I've got some more stuff to pack up for Miss Smiley. The thought of Loretta and Mr Whoops on Bob's boat is dreadful. I know. They might well wreck the place. I think I'd better come and help too. <gasps> Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa. Now, as you know, you Grandpa's shrinking cap is magic. And when he puts it on, it makes him magic too. And his magic can make things go. Like this. And this. But today, he's going to come with me. In my pocket, Grandpa. But just then, <gasps> Auntie Jules came back. <laughs> oh, Grandpa's gone for a little lie down, has he? He's only been up five minutes, poor old thing. Lazy old thing, more like. Come on, Josh, hurry up. I hadn't managed to get Grandpa, but I knew he'd find another way of coming with me. Oh, well, I stay for a drive. And I was right. I drove himself to Sunny Sands Harbour in my cousin Jason's car and we sailed off down the river in Queenie. Soon, Auntie Jules dropped us off at Bob's boat, the Boomerang. It's called the Boomerang because when it sails away, it always comes back again. Right. <laughs> this will be shiny as a new pin when I've finished. <laughs> Careful on those steps, Mr Whoops. <laughs> How could I be so clumsy? <laughs> While Great Aunt Loretta helped Mr Whips up, Grandpa slid down the banister. Then he jumped onto a shelf and hid behind Bob's musical boat. Now, ooh, I've made a lovely little present for Bob to keep in his... Great Aunt Loretta never says toilet out loud because she thinks it's rude. A toilet roll cover, eh? A <laughs> ruff ruff. <laughs> right, time to get on. Come on, you two. Sweep and dust. I'm going up to scrub the decks. Let the spring cleaning begin. <laughs> Right. 
Uh, vase, Mr Whoops. So, Mr Whoops went to get a vase. There, lovely. Right, now I'm going to dust all these shelves. <laughs> Grandpa knew he'd be seen by the musical boat, so he did this. He jumped onto the table and hid under the poodle by the vase of flowers. Then, the poodle did this. Hurt you! Oh, my goodness! The toilet roll poodle just sneezed! Don't be so silly. It must have been Josh. Here, clear those shelves for me. And I'm going to put you where you belong, in the... Come out, Josh! Mr Wolves thought the poodle just sneezed. I guessed what had happened. Grandpa was inside a poodle in Bob's toilet. But just then, this happened. <laughs> Here, take these out of and the Mr. way. And Mr. Whoops took there. the vase of flowers and put them next to the poodle on the shelf. And then this happened. Hurt you! Oh. It did it again. The toilet roll poodle sneezed. It's alive. Oh, don't be so silly. Now sit down there out of the way. I'll go check on the sneezing poodle. Right, now I'm going to polish the decks. Now you stay there. Stay. Talk to the kookaburra. I put Grandpa down. Josh, come and help me. Then I went up on deck to help Great Aunt Loretta. Grandpa jumped up and hid. Oh, oh surely I could do something. Now, sit down. Stay exactly where you are. Oh, my goodness. You talk. A talking kookaburra? Well, I never. Who's a pretty boy, then? Who's a pretty boy? Me. I am. I am. Loretta will never believe me when I tell her that you talk. Then maybe don't tell her. We should whisper, then. Shh. Up on deck, things weren't going well. Ooh, watch out. Now it's all polished. It's very slippery. I was looking for Grandpa, but I heard... <gasps> I'll get her out, Josh. I'll get her out. And Mr. Whips went upstairs to help Great Aunt Loretta. But then I heard this. Oh. Mr. Whips had fallen in the water too. Then I saw Grandpa. There you are, Grandpa. Yes, I was being a talking kookaburra to stop Mr. Whips from having another little accident. But he's just had one. Don't worry. Mr. Whips and Loretta have got their life jackets on. They'll be perfectly safe. Just a little wet. You've got to tidy all this lot up, Josh. I told you they'd be hopeless. So I tidied everything up, and Great Aunt Loretta and Mr Whips wrapped themselves in Bob's towels and left their clothes drying on the deck. I'll let you into a secret, Loretta. The kookaburra talks! <laughs> Don't be so silly. And Great Aunt Loretta got up to take a look. It's stuffed. Grandpa had decided to make a quick getaway. He wasn't sure where to hide, so he ran through the open door. Just then, Auntie Jules arrived. Oh, I found all your clothes upstairs. Oh, oh. oh. and I'm glad to see you. Oh. I'm going to get changed. And guess where she went to get changed? At that moment, Bob came home. Hello, Bob. Oh, what have you all been up to? Oh, howdy, Mr. Whoops. Ooh, problem. Little accident. <laughs> we thought we'd clean up your boat for you, Bob. Oh, that's great. Oh, I'm a bit grubby, I'm afraid. I've been out hiking with Mr. Yonker Stomper. Oh, I've made a mess already. Great Aunt Loretta was back in her clothes, but poor Grandpa couldn't hold on any longer. Hurt you! Uh, oh! Oh, goodness me! Oh, go! There is a sneezing poodle in the toilet. I ran to rescue Grandpa. Oh, good grief, Bob. Look at the mess you've made. Oh, I don't know why we bothered. Bye, Bob. A sneezing poodle? Yes! And your kookaburra talks too! <laughs> right. Well, you have been having a lot of fun while I've been away, haven't you? Yes, it was awesome. Bye, Mr. Whoops. Bye, Bob. Bye, Josh. 
Soon, we were back at the mill on the marsh. Auntie Jules and Great Aunt Loretta went inside to make tea. I took Grandpa out of my pocket and put him down. We did it, Josh. We stopped Loretta and Mr Whoops from messing up Bob's boat. Yes, Grandpa. I know what I call it. Teamwork! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Grandpa, you're up. <laughs> I picked these for you, Grandpa. Have a smell. Oh, thank you, Loretta. <laughs> Bob didn't deserve his. He made the boomerang all muddy. Ooh, that roll holder poodle. Ooh, he kept sneezing. Muddy! <gasps> like that, Grandpa. Just like that. Exactly like that. Really? Oh, bread and jam, anyone. My latest hobby. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. <laughs> In Chateau Shampoo, there's Boris Boo Hoo. And Boris is too. Boris is trouble, you wait and see. But they don't care, they love to be hairy. Tired, Wiggy. We've got to clean the hairy fairy tree house, remember? Oh, I can't quit. I'm too tired. Oh, oh. Tired, see? Oh. oh, hi there. Wiggy's being really lazy today. Oh, I am not lazy. Tell him I'm not lazy. I'm just tired. Oh, what is she like? Watch this. OK, fine, Wiggy. But uh, remember what happened the time someone else we know was too lazy to do the cleaning? Hmm? <gasps> yes, I do. This is hilarious. <laughs> Listen, you see, well, it all started up on the hill at Chateau Shampoo with, I bet you guessed who, Boris Boohoo, what's he gonna do? Hello, Boris was trying to clean up his very dirty factory and he wanted Boise to help, but <laughs> Boise was too busy having fun. We were watching from our hidey pipes. <laughs> Boris wasn't in the mood for fun. <laughs> he was in the mood for dusting. But just then, Boise put the bucket down and this happened. I don't think dusting's his thing. Uh, no. And dusting wasn't <laughs> Boris's thing. He gave up. It was all too tiring for Boris. He was far too lazy to do the cleaning. And Boise was far too busy having fun to do the cleaning. So who was going to help Boris? Because today was... The day of the big clean-up. Maybe Boris would see something in Hairyland to give him an idea. He looked through the hairy staring and guess what he saw? ma -ha, ha He saw Ma coming through his garden. ma -ha, ha She's got a heart of gold. Uh -huh. Ha, 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 of gold. She's always having fun. There's fun for everyone. Under the hairy sun. She's got a heart of gold. Ma's got a heart of gold. 
heart of gold. Had a blur. Boris had an idea. Ma could clean up Chateau Shampoo for him. But how could he get her to do it? Huh? What he needed now was a plan. Boris needs a plan, a plan, he needs a plan as quick as he can. He needs a plan, he needs it quick. He needs to plan a clever trick. What'll it be? What'll it be? What'll it be? <laughs> Boris's plan was to pretend to be sick so that Ma would clean his factory. <laughs> Boise was still enjoying messing about with the mop when... Ma arrived! She was always pleased to see Boise. <laughs> She'd made hairy pear pie and all sorts of treats. Ah, she wants him to go on a picnic. <gasps> can we go, can we go, please? Depends what Boris is planning. <laughs> Boise couldn't wait to go on the picnic. But Ma wondered where Boris was. Boise said he was in his bedroom. So Ma went upstairs to ask Boris if Boise could come on the picnic. Let's go and see what he's up to. And there was Boris in bed. <gasps> Boise was surprised. Ma was worried. Poor Boris, he wasn't well. She put the picnic basket down next to him. Boris can smell hairy pear pie in the basket. Yep, today just got even better for him. Ma started to fuss over him. But Boris begged her to clean the factory. He was too ill to do it himself and couldn't bear the place in such a terrible mess. But Ma said that now wasn't the time for that. Now was the time to make Boris better. Oh, be scoot! <gasps> Yuck. Boris was desperate for pie. No. But Boise said no and went to find Ma. Mm. Ma rang Pa on the hairy howler. She told him to bring some hairy turnips up to Chateau Shampoo. They were going to make hairy turnip tonic. <laughs> hairy turnip tonic is disgusting. Yeah, but Ma thinks it makes people better. I think it'll make Boris sick, like this. <laughs> Ugh, unnecessary. Boris couldn't wait any longer for a bit of hairy pear pie, but just then... <laughs> Ma said they were making him turnip tonic to get him better. Now it was time for the turnip tonic making to begin. <laughs> Tip the turnips into the pot, into the pot. How many have we got? Don't know for sure, but there's a heck of a lot of so hairy, hairy turnips. In the pot now, mash them, bash them, squirt them up and smash them. Hairy, hairy turnips are turning to mush. Mash them, bash them, squirt them up and smash them. Add more water and look at the slush. So crush it, slush it, mix it up and mash it. Hairy turnip tonic is looking swell. Crush it, slush it, mix it up and mash it. Hairy turnip tonic will make poor Corey swell. <laughs> Soon, Ma was giving Boris a big spoonful of hairy turnip tonic. <laughs> Boris tried again with the duster, but Ma wouldn't hear of it. They had to get him better first. But Boris said he'd never get better if his factory wasn't clean. And he pretended to cry. Nobody wanted to see Boris upset, but cleaning just wasn't important right now. So Ma had an idea. An idea to cheer him up. Boise had an idea too. He 
thought he'd do a little dance to cheer Boris up. But it didn't work. He wanted the cleaning done. Ma got on the hairy howler to Nana and told Nana that Boris wasn't well. Boris's plan wasn't working. So he thought that if he started to try to do the cleaning, then Ma would take over. <laughs> Ma and Pa were stirring the hairy turnip tonic again and waiting for Nana and Minnie. And they didn't have to wait long. <laughs> Boise was so pleased to see Minnie. And you know what happens when Boise's pleased to see Minnie. Oh, why did I know that was going to happen? <laughs> Nana arrived, and just then, the bedroom door flew open. <gasps> Boris came downstairs with a duster and the broom, hoping that someone would take over from him. But they all told him to go back to bed. Boris's acting got worse and worse, and then suddenly he tripped on the bucket and went head first into the turnip tonic. <laughs> He's covered in hairy turnip tonic. <laughs> Later, Boris was tucked up in bed and being cheered up by Nana. Suddenly, she had an idea. So she picked up the duster and did this. <laughs> Ma said it was time for them to go. So off they went to enjoy their picnic, taking the hairy pear pie with them. <laughs> Boris said Nana could go too. He was better now. But Nana said no. She'd stay until he was up and about again and well enough to do the cleaning. <laughs> Anyway, Wiggy, you aren't sick, so we should go inside and do the cleaning. Oh, well, actually, I do feel a little bit not well. Really? Mm, yes, just a little bit. Well, I'm sure you'll be better if I make you some hairy turnip tonic. <gasps> no! Or, or I could tickle you. Are you? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I promise. I promise. I can try this for you.